on Omar Road is taken from Omar the third prophet. Um, Omar, Omar Road in the village of Zufare grew up to the age of 30 reigns when he took as a wife a Mandinka maid whose name was Dinka Keba. And by Dinka Keba were born in order four sons whose names were in order of arrival um, Kunta, Lamin, Suwadu, and Mahdi. Now, the old man, as I say, it took maybe three and a half hours to get across all the lateral description and come down to that point to those four brothers. At that time, as he had stopped maybe 50 times in the course of the morning to say something about some individual, he just turned and sort of waved his hand and he said, um, and in the year that the king's soldiers came, and I went in later in London, checked out that reference with something called O'Hare's poetry. Uh, the oldest of these Kuta was away from this village chopping wood when he disappeared. And the family searched and searched and searched for him and they could never find him. And then they assumed that two bob had gotten him. I later found two bob as generic West African for European or white person. And then he went on with the story. I was absolutely, utterly riveted because the man had told me he had no in the world. No, he told me the exact dovetailing thing of what I'd heard in Henning, Tennessee in the living room all my early life. And he went on and he finished the show. Then I told the interpreters, I showed the interpreters an article that I had written about what the family had been sold in here. And they told the old man, and when he perceived that what that meant, that directly my lineage went right back to that village, right back to the family. He told the villagers, and they ensued, I can't go into the whole description, I haven't time, but it was like they were all barefooted, the feet began to beat on the earth, the bodies began to move almost like from the ankles to the knees to the hips. It was a beautiful thing, and suddenly they were moving in a rather singular dance, and uh, they were, there was a phenomenon thing that about 12 ladies had little babies little baby, and they suddenly began to rush up to me and thrust the baby, and I would like to check the baby to keep it from falling. I felt that. Then they snatched the baby away, and another lady would have me a baby. It was like maybe in two minutes I had 12 babies that I was holding. And it was something tactile. It was some fun thing you think about the sense of touch together, the blood thing. And then, as I said, these were Muslim people, and they took me away to their little mosque, mud and straw, as every other building in the village. And, uh, we, they told me I had to take off my shoes. I was so excited I forgot. I knew that, but I forgot. And we went in and we uh, kneeled and, and the prayer, prayer. I couldn't understand the underlating Arabic, but it was translated that the key of what they said was uh, thanks to Allah for one, quote, lost long from us whom God has returned. And that was that quote. Now, I can't either, I don't have the time to describe you the whole adventure of getting, you know, coming out of there and going back to Bathurst. And very quickly, I'll sum up that following that, I came back to this country and I told the public that I had to take, I didn't know how much longer to do the book because what I had to do was what we call something in the writing business called saturation research. I had to go everywhere there was a scrap of information because I had no longer the story of a family, I had the saga of a people because we all had come in exactly the same way. It was a question of what village, what tribe, what slave ship, what plantation, what had happened subsequently.